Okay, we're going to call the regular board meeting of the Spooner Area School Dist District to order. Um, and before we get going here, um, I just wanted to introduce the um, lady on the end. That is our newest board member, Terry Oslison, and her board term is from 21 to 22. She is taking the empty vacant seat um, from Kate McKinney. So we want to welcome her. So if we could have a round of applause, please appreciate it. All right. Could I have a roll call, please, Jesse? Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 And if we could stand again for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we're moving on to item D, um, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion that we approve the agenda. I ask that you would take number E and put it at the bottom. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Is there a reason to move the agenda item? Yeah, I think that um, that we should discuss um, g what is currently G. Uh, I think that's important to discuss, uh, and I just would like to discuss that first <clears throat> before we get to uh, that particular uh, line item. And I was under the impression that the reason why it was at the bottom is so that it would take the time that we need to have that discussion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 All right. Then the um, the item E will be moved um, under item G on the agenda. So that will be the last item of the evening. Okay. And we're moving on to item two. The consent agenda, approval of the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. And a second? Okay. Excuse me. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And moving on to item three, the informational session. And I'm assuming everybody has seen the board reports, administrative reports. Um, please remember that the Committee of the Whole um, minutes are posted on the district website, but I will do a brief overview of the minutes of the Committee of the Whole. Um, the Committee of the Whole meeting was held on October 4th um, here in the Spooner Auditorium. Um, opened at 5.30, we did a roll call. We did presentations. We had a staff recognition, uh, Mrs. Salo. Recommending administrator was Dennis Schurz. We had a referendum update from Brad Kunkel from CISA 10. Received, the board received and replaced that information on file. We had an update from the district nurse, Sarah Hamilton, uh, reviewed the COVID-19 update for the district. We received and placed that on file as well. We had a district-wide infor informational update or operational update which is new to the co-agenda, which will happen um, monthly. And that was given by Dr. Aslan. The board received and placed that information on file as well. 
We had the district third Friday pupil count report. We replaced that information on file. We discussed the substitute teacher pay rate and that is, was a consensus to move to tonight's regular meeting and discuss the student's request for early college credit and start college now. That was also had a consensus to move to tonight's meeting. We had um, review of the parliamentary procedures. We received that information and placed it on file. And we also had a discussion regarding contact tracing and parental decision regarding quarantine. And that was motion to move that to tonight's meeting um, as we currently know. And so there was a consensus to move that to tonight's meeting. They had the 30, 60, 90 day planning cycle. And we also received that information and placed it on file. And we had a financial update, approval of the vouchers, and um, we did a considered the referendum construction project furniture purchase, which was actually an action item, which we don't normally do, but because it was time sensitive, we did vote on that. And we had a couple of resignations and hirings, and we adjourned at 7.06 p.m. All right, we're moving on to number four, um, which is community comments. Per Wisconsin statute 19.83 parent two, 19.84 parent two, the board will allow public comments. The public comment section shall be limited to 45 minutes unless extended by a vote of the board. The 45 minutes public comment section will be divided by the number of people who have signed up Individuals addressing the board during the public comment section shall have their remarks limited to no more than 10 minutes. The community comment section of the meeting agenda provides members of the community with the chance to speak directly to the school board. It is a valuable opportunity for community members to have questions, concerns, requests, and ideas heard directly by the school board and administration. Participants are asked to step up to the microphone so that everyone is able to hear when you speak, providing your contact information, on the community concerns sign-up sheet helps the district follow up with your item. And currently we have five people signed up for community comments. So we're gonna start with number one is Jesse Ward. If you please step up to the microphone. Sure will. <clears throat> All right, my name is Jessie Ward. I live in the township of Evergreen here in Spooner. I last spoke at the September 28th meeting. At that time, I was urging the board to listen to the parents who are telling you what they prefer for their children. I'm not going to rehash what we all think of the ridiculous quarantine of healthy children, nor our feelings about masks, at this point in the game, no amount of data, facts, or reports is going to change anyone's mind. What I would like to do is to reiterate to you that you have a majority here who have repeatedly shared their opinions and desires for how the district should proceed with COVID protocols as it relates to their children. And yet the actions that I have observed from the board the last three meetings have shown an obvious predisposition to disregard this majority, opting instead for seemingly predetermined decisions. I heard Mr. Johnson insist several times at the last meeting that the board is on our side. No. When certain board members have offered compromises, possible solutions outside the box, after listening to what the majority had to say, those solutions were immediately voted down without even consideration. There were board members who voted against even extending time for individual public comment. You didn't even want to give us the opportunity to speak, to speak fully and to make ourselves heard. You did not want to hear us. No. <laughs> You do not appear to be on our side. 
Mr. Johnson has also said that the board is lacking leadership and guidance at the local level. We are your local leadership. The people who are showing up and speaking up are your local leadership. The board should be listening to and considering, at the very least, what we have to say, not just dismissing us. I have much more than I would like to say, <laughs> much, much more than I would like to say. Um, but I'll close with this. It feels like there's a very obvious bias among some members of the school board. That has been made very clear. If I'm wrong, if my observations are invalid, if there is no ulterior motive or incentive for the decisions being made, then show us that. Your actions and your body language, both during the meetings and outside of the meetings, are very telling. Show us that you are listening to us and that you actually care about the welfare of the children and their families and not some agenda. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next one up is Nicole Fredrickson. Will you please come forward? Is that good? Okay. Uh, my name is Nicole Fredrickson. I spoke uh, last at the last meeting. Um, I have three kids in the district, um, town of Springbrook. Um, each kid is in each level of the school. Um, so first I wanna let me share a story with you. Her back against the wall, her small frame slumped slowly to the floor, slouching into the corner of the room. She pulled her knees close to her chest. Her favorite stuffed animal dangled with her fingertips. She could hear them talking on the other side of the door. They were whispering again, but she could still hear some of their words, quarantine, COVID. She wasn't sure how many days she'd been what seemed locked in her room, six, maybe seven. It seemed like forever. She had been told it would be the same for as many more. Tears silently slid down her cheeks. They weren't like the tears she had shed when she couldn't get the toys she wanted at Walmart for her eighth birthday, just a few months ago. These tears came from somewhere she hadn't known existed. These tears were from fear, from hurt, from um, some instincts she hadn't known existed until, until she had been locked in that room all alone. This may sound like a scene from some horrid news story or a dystopian movie about child abduction, but it's not. There is a difference between quarantine and isolation. This not only happened in our district to certain students, but in others, in others, I'm sorry, in other district, those memories will be with that child forever, all because parents, caregivers, thought they were doing what's right, what was best, which is what I'm sure the board and Sarah thought that what they've been doing so, thus far. But now, more than a year into this, we know more about COVID, and I believe we can find a happy medium between keeping students in school, students and teachers' safety without compromising learning. I believe there are parents and teachers and students on both sides of this, obviously. I did speak for teachers who have a different opinion and didn't feel freely to talk as their opinion didn't mirror that as a majority of the board and didn't feel free to speak. I understand there are teachers on the other side. I wish both could feel they could speak freely, but I have been told that opposing opinions have been reprimanded for speaking up. I spent 90% of my nights in my 12-year-old's room Half of her fourth grade was taken away from her. She never got to visit the middle school. She didn't know what to expect when she got there. And last year in fifth grade gave her such, such anxiety that she can't sleep. She is worried because she has an ear issue that makes her throat sore and her ears ache that she will be sent home again and again. I really wish she had a normal year especially in her first year of middle school, but it was ruined for her. Hoping this year would be better with no improvement so far. She has already been quarantined once. I really hope that the board favors the majority of the parents that have spoke on this topic tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Jeff Hoffman. 
Next up is Andrew Melton. Thank you. Uh, once again, my name is Andrew Melton, and I want to thank you for serving on the board. I do know it's a difficult job, and it's been difficult in the past couple of years. I do think our annual meeting went smooth. I think that we can work in unity together. Uh, no one elected a community member to be the chairperson tonight. That's happened in the past when it was heated in the community. We are for you guys. We are for our teachers and our staff. We're also for our students. We want to see the community grow. We want to see the numbers of an open enrollment into the district rise. So we are together. We want to find compromise. Last meeting, we heard from a couple staff members by email that they felt like they weren't being heard. And I, I apologize for that. I want to hear from all of our staff. I want to know what they're thinking. And so I'd like to make a recommendation tonight. I would ask that you would amend Michelle's quarantine motion to help staff members and students alike. So I would recommend that any staff that have been exposed would have the choice to quarantine, regardless of vaccination status, regardless of wearing a mask or not, and regardless of already having COVID or not. If they've been exposed in their classroom and they feel like it's necessary for them to quarantine, I would suggest that you put that in your motion tonight. Also, any student who has been exposed that a parent or guardian can choose to quarantine, regardless of having the vaccination or not, regardless of having COVID or not in the past, and regardless of wearing a mask. Again, if they have COVID at this time, I'm not saying they shouldn't quarantine, they must understand that. I'm saying if they've had it in the past. We talk about liability. Last time was mentioned about liability. And I understand that from your perspective. That's why I thought it was a good suggestion that you paid some of the substitute teachers more. I would suggest when you vote on that tonight, you could even add that for this upcoming year that it's considered hazard pay. I would assume they would know the risk of coming and substituting during COVID, but it'd be on there for liability purposes. I believe when you would look at it, if there's a lawsuit or not, you could say we did everything in our power as a district. We allowed people to be vaccinated. We allowed them to wear a mask. They could wear a shield or not. We allowed them to quarantine if they were exposed to be able to go home during that time. We did everything in our power, but we wanted our kids in school. And so as a board, we voted to keep our students in school. Now you may say there's a risk. We've talked to our lawyers. Just read today that there's been a lawsuit in Wisconsin, two different school districts. There's been a lawsuit against districts for not being tougher. So I understand the concern but then I started looking into those, and it was interesting to me, the one parent that was complaining, their child was asymptomatic. Never had any symptoms, but tested positive, is suing the school district because not having stricter restrictions. So I started looking into the other one as well, and then I find out both of these lawsuits, which are seeking class action status, are funded by the Monaco Brewing Company Super PAC. A Super PAC is an independent political action committee that can raise unlimited sums of money for cooperations, unions, and individuals to influence elections. They're the ones that are paying for that lawsuit. So yes, we could worry about those things, but what if there was a lawsuit the other way, that if a parent sued in Wisconsin saying, my kid wasn't in school, therefore they missed their education, therefore they weren't able to go to sporting events, maybe they missed a scholarship and they sue that way. Would we just change the policies based on those? We don't just continue to change our policies based on lawsuits that are out there. One other thing I would just like to mention is when you think about liability, when you think about this, usually you would get a second opinion. If you go to a doctor, and it's something simple. They say, you know, I expect that there's something wrong with your arm, but I think you should go in a sling for two weeks. We don't think nothing of it. But if they said we need to amputate, we would get a doctor's opinion, a second opinion, and say, 
you sure this is what I should do? I feel like we cut off education in the last year and a half for our children. And I'm not going back there. It's already happened. But I would say if you're going to cut education again after all the information that we know, if that's what our lawyers are saying, I would say you should have probably got a second opinion. You should find out from somebody else. We know what a lawyer would say. They would say, if you want to be safest from liability, then you do everything that's recommended. But we have to weigh out the risks and the reward for that. And so, again, I'm going to encourage you tonight, just as the others have spoken and did a good job speaking already, please listen to the, your people of the community, the majority that are continuing to encourage you. Let's compromise. Let's give the staff protection. Let's give the students protection, but let's have them in school. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is John Ripley. All right. Hello, I've, I've spoke before, and uh, I, I know very few of you actually listen. Uh, so I'll try to keep this short, because you guys know it all already. Um, I, I just want to caution the, the school board that your actions and the actions of uh, some of your administration are on the verge of delegitimizing de de this institution here. Um, it, it seems like education is secondary. I'm, I'm I'm a father of a healthy quarantine that she was identified uh, uh, and released from school for homecoming week and uh, missed the last of uh, the games of a sport she loves. Um, and I've seen firsthand of what you guys were considering a success in the uh, virtual learning realm. I mean, I was at a few meetings where it was touted how um, this virtual learning at home was working and I really need to know what your definition of a working is. Because is, if spending an hour a day at a computer is, is what you guys consider a success, holy cow, then you guys aren't in it for the education of our kids. Um, it, but, but the one nice benefit of um, with your kid at home and you're seeing um, the, the teachers that are putting in an effort, I, I have to really thank a couple of teachers. I won't thank them right here, but when I see them, I will thank them because it showed me who these some really, really good teachers are, and it also showed me others. Um, and, and, and honestly, as a graduate, graduate of Spooner and a small business owner in town, I have, I feel no connection or sense of community or sense of loyalty to this facility and school anymore. When people come, the kids come, or double, the kids don't even come and ask for money. I, I don't even want to give any money to the school right now. If anybody wants to do anything out of school like they did at homecoming, I will give you a whole bunch of money. But as far as you guys are concerned, I have no sense of loyalty to you guys at all. Um, this is really an embarrassment. And, and what's really incredible to me is in the olden days, the nurse would take sick kids out after she used the thermometer, and now she, they're taking healthy kids out using a tape measure. That's the most ridiculous, most foolish thing that I, I can see happening here. Please get rid of this foolishness and sending healthy kids home so that they can have an education, which is why you guys are here. So thanks. Thank you. And next up is Brian Swanson. Um, in September, you guys were inundated with a lot of data and a lot of information. Um, I think it was real information from real parents um, that had skin in the game. There's several of them here tonight. Um, that was ignored. You sat there like you listened, but you really didn't listen. At least I felt that way. I don't think I'm alone. Um, so one of the things that I thought about when I left there and I talked to people walking out the door, I thought, you know, there was a dozen people maybe that spoke up. Tonight there's five, six of us. And 
I started to think, okay, how many people here have skin in the game, and how many people here support item G as it's proposed or amended? Mr. Melton. Um, it makes me ask the question, so I want to ask it now. How many people here support item G if you don't feel bad about raising your hand? So we have an idea. The public that I talk to in the meanwhile, you hear things, maybe, maybe you talk to people, hey, come to the board meeting, this is happening. And I'm shocked at how many people really don't know what's going on. They just wait for the next email, for the next phone call. And <clears throat> it is what it is. But um, kids need to be in school. There's protections for school districts from lawsuits. I think I quoted them at the last uh, meeting in that statute. So kids need to be in school. Thank you. Thank you. OK, that does conclude our community comment section for this evening. We're moving on to item five, which is the discussion and action portion of the meeting. Um, item A is adoption of the 2122 tax levy. So I'm looking for a motion to adopt the 2122 tax levy of 16 million seven hundred and fifty thousand six hundred and sixty three dollars. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? Could I have a roll call vote, please, Jesse? Yes. 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 Okay. So um, that did pass. Um, seven zero, correct, Jesse? Okay, thank you. And we're moving on to item B, is consider personnel recommendations. Dr. Aslan? One resignation, Kristen Vick, JV girls basketball coach, three years of service. Do I have a motion to approve this resignation? Make that motion. And a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Vick, for your de dedication to this district for the last three years. And we have some hirings in the district as well. Two hiring recommendations. Bailey Hansen, ESSER funded health aid part-time, recommended by Mr. Hopke. Andal Hyde Bennett, a s special education paraprofessional part-time, long-term, and she replaces Christina Davidson, again, recommended by Mr. Hopke. Do I have a motion to approve these hirings? So moved. Second? I'll, I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome to the district, thank you. All right, we're moving on to item C, consider acceptance of donations. Mr. Dr. Eslin? A donation from Spooner Health System, The Dock, Round Man Brewery, iPlay, Trigo Mobile and Travel Center, First and Vine, Barron Electric. Uh, it's a donation to Spooner Elementary School, Positive Behavior Intervention and Supports, PBIS, Railsway Superhero of the Month Awards, $200 each uh, for a total of $1,400. The next one is uh, from an anonymous donor to Spooner Area School District students with negative meal account balance, $500. Do I have a motion to approve these donations? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much for these incredible donations. 
and item D is consider the fundraiser request. One fundraiser request tonight coming in from the middle school uh, Rails Rally Committee, Michelle O'Connell is the point of contact, uh, looking to do a late October to mid-November fundraiser, club's choice catalog sale, uh, items such as home goods, wrapping paper, food items, anticipated profit of $3,000, and the funds would be used for the middle school activity fund. Do I have a motion to approve this fundraiser? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so I'm gonna skip item E and move to item F which is consider the student request for early college credit and start college now options. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the student request for early college credit and start college now as presented at the Cal meeting. I'll make that motion to approve early college credits. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This is a wonderful opportunity for um, students to earn college credits. All right, then we're moving to item G. Consider contact tracing and parental decision regarding quarantine. Mr. Milton, do you want to start? Or Mrs. Jepson? Uh, I will make the motion to stop contact tracing. Michelle, excuse me. So, can you, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I will make the motion to stop contact tracing and leave the decision up to the parents at the time of close contact. After what was stated today, I am also okay with the fact that anyone who is contact traced or has contact and wants to go home, that is also part of the motion. So if they have it, they can go. A teacher, a student, anything, it doesn't matter if they're vaccinated or not. Okay, so can you repeat that motion for yes. me? Thank you. My motion is to stop contact tracing and leave the decision up to the parents or the students at the time of close contact. However, I am stating that in that motion that a teacher or any student who also feels they need to go home, even if they are vaccinated, should be allowed to go <coughs> as part of the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Could I hear what the motion is again? We're hearing voices, but I'm not seeing anything written that I can actually read it and understand what I'm voting on. So the motion is no more contact tracing, leaving the decision up to the parents. If the parent wants their child to be quarantined, they are, that would be fine. That would go for if any staff person was exposed to, would have the option to be quarantined if they so chose, it would be up to them, or to stay and continue teaching or working in the district. Is that correct? Correct. And there is a second. So by contact tracing, we're determining who was in close contact. That's, you don't want to determine who was in close contact. Is that what the motion states? I'm stating that they aren't gonna be sent home if they don't choose to be sent home. So the quarantining. The quarantine But the motion you said was no contact, contact tracing. So contact tracing. tracing. They can contact trace and state who they are, but they have to be told to the parents and the parents get to choose. So my question is, so the nurse would still notify the parents and the student? Correct. Okay. I think the motion would need to be amended then because you okay, said then, stop. Then, I, would yes. say, I would say, I shouldn't say stop. I would say continue to contact Trace. However, the decision is up to the parents. So they, they would be notified if there is a positive case in their classroom, but they would then have their, their own right to determine whether they should Correct. or should not stay in school, Correct. depending on what the parent has decided. Correct. But you are asking that the school does contact them? Yes. Okay. Okay, symptomatic or non-symptomatic, I guess. We have, to, we have to be pretty specific so that we know how to amend everything. 
if that's what we cho so choose to do. So, okay, well, Mr. Johnson. Down there too. What, what I originally heard in the motion was that, that there's not going to be any contact tracing. Now I'm hearing there's going to be contact tracing. Right, she tracing. amended. She amended her motion. Okay. Yep, she amended her motion. I, I believe this she didn't state it correctly the first time. Correct. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have said stop. I should have said okay. contact tracing will be done. However, it will be up to the parents to determine okay. if they want their children who are healthy to come to school or not. And they also can choose to quarantine if they feel that Correct. that's what's best for their family. Same with... Correct? Yes. Okay. Same with staff members. Same with staff members and... We, are you talking symptomatic or non-symptomatic? If they're symptomatic, they are to... They should quarantine. So, okay. or, I mean, or, if they have symptoms, they're gonna... They should... They, they should, should be home thank if you. they're sick. Okay. Do, do you got that now, Paul? Do you understand? Or do well, you, I believe what she's doing is she's telling us that it's parents' choice whether or not they want to send their kid to school, and it's also staff's choice whether they want to come to school, but are we going to still be sending people home if they're showing symptoms or if they're testing positive. Yes, that would be, that would be. So that would be a yes. Can we put that as an amendment then also, or is that, that wasn't part of this? Okay. Um. So, so just clarification, <laughs> it, would, it would be the, it would be the discontinuation of the quarantine. The contact tracing is still in place. Yes, because uh, I believe it's still important to let the parents know if you have a positive in your classroom. Off from so. that confirmed positive case. Correct. And another point of clarification, if a person is sick, they, oh, they should. should. Or if yeah, they, they become be symptomatic, home. if they become symptomatic with that, with that positive contact or that contact with that positive person, we ask that you would keep your child home. And so also the rule still applies that if they have symptoms, any of the symptoms, that they should still stay home. Correct. Yes. Okay. Is that correct, Mrs. Jepson? Yes. Okay. I'm going to make the assumption <laughs> that they would. Well, I'd, I'd like to just add one, one note, because some of the okay. symptoms have nothing to do with COVID. We have people who have allergies. We have had so many different things happen that have nothing to do with COVID. So I think that there should be some good discretion that I don't feel has been shown. So I, I think that we need to be careful how we draw that symptomatic out, if that's my personal opinion. So, I mean, I think they should go get tested, and if they're a negative, then they should be allowed back into school. So if you want to send them home, take the test, hopefully we're having that shortly in the school, they can take the test. If it comes back negative, hey, come back to school. So is there gonna okay. be a time frame then if they decide not to take a test, because that's their choice, and you send them home, what is the time frame that they would be required to stay home? I think it would be what we have currently. Which is 24 hours after you are, are symptom free. you have right. your symptom free. Just getting us all clear. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> just, just for clarification, <laughs> just for clarification. Yeah, Jesse, could you please read that back for us so we know what we're. <laughs> Jesse's gonna call uh, Michelle, say it go. again. Okay, I, all right, so let's. Okay. <laughs> so what I have right now is motion to continue contact tracing and leave the decision up to the parents for non-symptomatic students at the time of close contact, also giving non-symptomatic staff members the choice of quarantine. No matter what vaccine status is, they have the choice to be quarantined or not. So you have discontinue contact tracing. You said continue, is that right? Continue. Okay. She okay. She I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. <laughs> okay. So, it's, go ahead. So we're yours. changing the um, designations within our our return to school plan. Depending on what, depending on the outcome of this decision this evening, would be then would we would would be policy. Okay. Okay. Is there a second on that motion? Amended motion. Please, I just, I need to have that. So then we can continue the discussion. Mr. Melton, are you going to second? Sure. I will second. <laughs> <laughs> I will second it. So then we can continue this discussion. So, <laughs> all right. If 
when we look at the points um, of what requires a quarantine at this mm -hmm. point and what we're changing, I think we have to include like the piece about symptomatic individuals that should be a part of the revised plan if we're amending that plan. Right, and I believe that was part of the amended motion. I didn't hear the symptomatic piece okay. in the amendment. Well, I would like to amend it. Amend okay. I would like to just say that I think it should be in there because right now we're hypersensitive to every symptom and I don't think it's been, that's not the way that I think we should go. I think if you're symptomatic or non-symptomatic or if you're symptomatic, go get tested. If it's a negative and, and it's a, a, a common cold, it's a cough, it's allergies, you should be welcome back in school. Hopefully they would wear a mask or whatever, but whatever they choose to do, they should be allowed back into school because it's not COVID. We want kids here who don't have COVID. So however that needs to be amended, that would be my proposal that we amend that be a part of that well, and I, would, and I would hope that if your child is sick or has a cold or the flu or a strep throat that you would keep them home. So, just like any other year. Um, okay. It concerns me to vote on something that we're not clear being on. very clear about okay. what it says. All right. So let's... <laughs> what, what I'm hearing is that they, they, they want to be able to choose to send their child to school that's showing no symptoms, even if there's been an exposure, right. even, if, even if they haven't been tested, even when we know that a person is most prevalent to pass it on the first three to five days once they've been exposed and are not showing symptoms at all, we're sending them right back into school. Even though they're not showing symptoms, they could be positive. And that's why we have the quarantine and the wait, is because we need that time to allow this to keep our school safe. And we so also probably you have... Could sitting, you could be sitting right next to the positive person, and that night I could take a test and be negative. Two days later I could still be negative, but I could still be positive sending it on. And, and Mr. No Mr. Johnson, we could have 50 kids in school dangerous. right now that are, are asymptomatic who would be positive if they got tested. And they have no symptoms. Well, what's, what's happening is we're, people are not testing. So unless we could have every certain every person tested, we have to just trust them that they're going to do what they feel is best to keep our schools safe. That's what I'm hearing. Well, there is a motion on the floor and a second. So. Um, I have a question okay. about the legal ramifications with, uh, with um, following the guidance that's presented as far as our administration, um, our school nurse who my understanding is has the legal responsibility to follow the guidance of local county or public health and public health by state statute has that authority. Well, I think if we were to go that route, we could take it out of the school's hands and just say all close contact tracing would happen by the county like other schools have done. If they want to do all this work, let's hand over the liability to the county and let them take care of it. But I don't believe at this time the county is contact tracing. Well, no, then that not. would be on them. It's funny how they're so hypervigilant sending us all this stuff that they want us to do that they're not even doing. If you ask me, that's pretty hypocritical. And they're asking for us to hold a a uh, heavy load that they're not even willing to touch themselves. Why in the heck are we doing it here? Dr. Aslan, can you address the legal ramifications from Dr. Aslan? Yeah, I, you know, you're, so you receive advice from the attorney that your district employs, right? So it's advice, you know, it's based on, on their best interpretation of, uh, statutes and case law and things of that nature. Um, you know, I, Mrs. Olson, I, I know that, uh, that you've been in contact with the, the attorney on the district as well. You know, they're, they're not gonna say you must or you, you shall. They're gonna say, here's what we advise. Mm -hmm. So, it's the best I can give you. Okay. 
Mr. Johnson, yes. Could you what speak what into I'm your hearing. microphone, please? So I think. Okay. Thank you. What I believe is going on here tonight is that it's once again we're talking about what's been going on for months. We're talking about risk. You are willing to risk your child. We have other parents who are saying we shouldn't have to risk my child. We should try to do everything we can to keep them safe. If it means keeping them home a little longer to keep our schools open, keep it safe, that's a good thing. So what we're doing once again is we are trying to determine what risk somebody else should be willing to accept. And that risk that we're willing to accept is based on what my beliefs are, what I've experienced, what my knowledge is. And the biggest part about this is, once again, we don't know a whole lot about this disease. It's been going on for 18 months, and we still can't agree. So I believe that, I think it's careless and reckless what this, what this motion is. It's, I believe it's careless and reckless. Well, and you can, you have, you have that right to your opinion, Mr. Johnson, so. Um, okay, so there is a motion on the floor, and there is a second. Um, yes, Mr. Melton. What's the proper procedure to amend that motion? I believe Mrs. Jepson did that. I amend my motion to, yeah, and if you would like you to redo amendment? it, would you like to redo it, Mr. Melton? Do you have an amendment? Do you have yeah, an amendment? I would like to amend that if they're symptomatic but test negative, that they're allowed back into school. Okay, so just to be clear, I'm gonna, <laughs> Jesse, you wanna, <laughs> We have an amended motion on the floor. Do we have a second to that amended motion? I well, I have a question, but then okay. I, I probably will second it too. But Go um, ahead. just a po point of clarification or just a point of, I think if it's parental choice and leaving it up, we would have mitigated or potentially if we have some distancing or stringent, as long as we can enforce, like we talked last, um, at the cow meeting, um, distancing and static seating charts. I think there's ways to mitigate um, the potential quarantining or stopping the quarantine. Um, but I mean, all said, I think we're all here to keep kids in school. I mean, I know I have a vested interest in that as well as everyone here. But I think if we can address the mitigating concerns that Mrs. Shears and um, Mr. Johnson brought up. I think we're there. I think we're there. So okay. I do think there I'll are some pieces we're missing in, in this proposed change. Um, as far as when do you quarantine, when can you return? We had specified um, lines of action that you can return with a negative test mm -hmm. um, or after so many days symptomatic. I'm not clear where we are now with that plan. It's not specifically defined. I do have a question I think about what, that okay. as well, just because, uh, just a concern, because we did have a large uptick this fall. I think we all agreed, so there was a lot of kids sick. I feel like there's a lot of kids sick. I had a kid sick. Um, so my concern though is that, is there something that we can amend, a way to amend this, that if there is a large increase, like we had a, a large increase of sick kids at one point, because 108 kids is a lot, um, is there some plan in place behind that? Well, and I think, I guess, I guess my take on this at this point is we are amending one part of that Safe Fit School plan, and if we can move forward with one thing, I believe that we can amend that plan and include that in the policy and amend that. Is that correct, Dr. Aslan? Yeah, it is correct. Okay. You, get, you know, your Safe at School plan is a board adopted document that serves as your policy and guide on COVID operations in the district. Yeah, it, it's yours to change. Um, it, if there's a, so I'm not quite sure what the motion and second are at this point, okay. but it, if there is a change in the plan, then obviously the plan's going to have to be updated to reflect to reflect those changes. If if, if there if there if would be passed, yeah. Okay. Like we've said from the onset, and this is a a document that that can change. Mm -hmm. Based on, based on the situation, and I think to uh, 
you know, address the concern about if there's an uptick, you know, you have, you have a couple different levels within that plan, so you're able to upgrade if, if there were some significant uptick in positive cases. Okay, so is, is either Mr. Melton or Mrs. Jepson prepared to either remove your motions and seconds and redo them so they're specifically stating certain criteria so that everybody is very clear on how we want to do this? Or are you sticking with the motion that you have and the amended motion that you have? Yes, Mrs. Esselson. Well, before they throw another motion out there, I just want <laughs> another, uh, another question. Um, assuming the document, the Safe at School plan is editable and um, adaptable, um, there are certain things that we should keep in place because we all know that as the pandemic goes, there's go it's going to be cyclical. Mm -hmm. There's probably going to be another increase in cases. So I think just to throw that out there, I just Yes, and I, don't believe, and I don't believe they're asking to get rid of the Safe at School plan. No, I think I, they I are amending the quarantine that. portion of that plan. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't take it as that either. Okay, so. Should we be looking at line by line what she said. in the plan, what we're changing, what's changed? I think... Uh, I think I at this point we have a motion to discontinue the quarantining of students. We are also notifying parents of a close contact. We are giving the parents that right to either keep their kids home or if they don't want to, they don't have to, or staff, if they feel that they need to quarantine, they should be able to do so. And we are talking about symptoms, so if they are symptomatic and they get tested and it is a negative test for COVID, they should be able to return to school. Second. That is what the motion is at hand. So symptomatic Correct. must quarantine? Is that negative. until they have a negative test? Is that what you're asking? I believe that would be correct. Okay. Yes, yes that would be correct. So, so symptomatic would still need to be tested, can I come to yes. school? Yes, just like anything else with either flu, strep, cold, whatever. I mean, I would hope that everyone in this room knows that if your child is sick, you would need to keep them home. And I, but if, Paul, if a parent didn't want to test and they wanted to keep their kid out because he's symptomatic, then do what we're already yeah. doing for whatever the days it is. And That's the Safe fine. at School plan does say that they are able to return on uh, those specific days 24 hours after they They're have no, no symptoms. Systematic. Right, correct. Regardless, so, regardless of the test. Yes. Some parents may not want to test them. Right. So. But so they stay home until 24 hours. Exactly. And that's exactly. Just like a fever and a cold. Thing. Exactly. All right. So like we have a motion on the floor, and we have a second. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All right. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Jesse? Yes. 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 No. All right, the motion passes six yeses, one no. Okay, order please. Order please, we're still conducting this meeting. All right, now we're going to be moving on to what was item E, which is now the last item on the agenda. Um, consider the substitute teacher pay rate. So motion to approve the increase in our short-term substitution teacher pay rate as presented at the COW. So Make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I think it was a great idea to add that hazard. It just it, that hazard pay for that. I think it's a great way to say during this until whatever date we have that we're adding that amount due to the current situation. So I and I believe that we presented that as through the 2022 school year. Is that correct, Dr. Esmond? 
June, June 30th, 2022. Mrs. Oslison. I also think it's a great idea and hopefully we'll get some more interest, but I also want to just for future, um, just consideration, I guess, if we have budget, if it's a budget item or can be a budget item, I think there would be some uh, good if we could keep that pay higher, especially for those t um, retired teachers or people that are subbing in the district that have experience, just because obviously the kids would benefit from that. I think the district would benefit from that. I think it would just be a good option to um, consider it for future, just it, especially for people with experience. Mrs. Jepson. Just a question. So we said through June of 2022, does that mean it will come back to discussion yes. after that? Yes. Meeting? Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Any other discussion? Okay. Could I have a roll call vote, please, Jesse? Yes. 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 All right. Could I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>